Hi, it's me, Marcho Anime. Welcome. Happy Halloween. I am Finn the Human, as you can obviously tell. This year as well. I don't know if I remember which year also, but uh, this is recommended by Wissy, my good friend Wissy. Um, I don't know anything about it. It's obviously it's HP Lowcraft or something by HP Lowcraft. That's all I know. Um, it's gonna take a little bit. This we're gonna like sit there. Grab some popcorn or something, because this is like a 30 minute video or something, I think. Because it takes 30 minutes to beat this, I think, or something. But anyway, let's get into the game. And happy Halloween, everyone. I just started the game just to see if anything worked, pretty much. Dagon is a fa I didn't read any of this, so just... Dagon is a faithful interactive adaptation of HP Lowcraft's work. Focus on story and atmosphere. You will not find difficult choices, action, consequences, or inventory management here. Oh, and moment is limited to progress through location. Okay. I am writing this under oh. Hopefully the recording goes smooth. Uh, during the game you will encounter interactive elements. Some of them will allow you to continue your journey. Others reveal interesting facts about the original short story. Is her st oh, and the author, okay. Some of the trivia is hidden in order to find the secrets. Focus your eye and look for the elder sign. Ooh. You can also access the found facts later. They will be available on the main menu, okay. So, oh, I see something. Oh, Do not hold on, guys. Let me. Okay, there we go. Think from my slavery to Morgan when I roam between your vigils. Okay. When you have read these hastily scrawled pages. You may guess, though never fully realize, why it is that I must have forgetfulness or death. Or oh, death. Something here. Can you guys see her? I'm gonna turn a little bit off because this is like a talking game. So I don't know. Which I was supercargo, fell a victim to the German Sea Raider. That is nice. Okay, so I guess we look at the boat. Shooting? That's nice. The Great War was then at its very beginning, and the ocean forces of the Hun had not completely sunk to their later degradation. Mm. So that our vessel was made a legitimate prize, whilst we of her crew were treated with all the fairness and consideration due us as naval prisoners. Okay. Uh. Oh, this thing. The Huns were Central Asian nomads who established a dominion in Europe and invaded the Roman Empire in the 5th century. AD. They were known as brutal, deadly warriors and masters of quick raids who also developed powerful composite bows, lassos, and early siege weapons. During World War One, the British used the word "nun" as a synonym, synonym for Germans in order to emphasize their brutality. However, the term originated when the German Emperor Wilhelm II gave a speech to his troops on the 27th of July 1900 before they embarked to China. Should you encounter the enemy, he will be defeated. No quarter will be given. Prisoner will not be taken. However, falls into your hands in f is forfeited. For forfeited. Yeah. Just as thousand years ago, the Huns, the Huns. What? Okay. Um. I, I said none over there. The the word Hun, not none. What a stupid idiot I am. Under their king At Attila made a name for themselves. One that even today makes them seem mighty in history and the legend. May the name German be affirmed by you in such a way in China that no Chinese will ever again dare to look cross-eyed at a German. Ooh. The refusal to take prisoner was a clear breach of the law and custom of war adopted during the first vague convention of 1899. Okay, I should have opened my window a little bit more. It's kind of hot. Let's go over there to the boat. So liberal indeed was the discipline of our captors that five days after we were taken, I managed to escape alone in a small boat with water and provisions for a good length of time. Well, let's get the fuck out.
When I finally found myself adrift and free, I had but little idea of my surroundings. Never a competent navigator, I could only guess vaguely by the sun and stars that I was somewhat south of the equator. Of the longitude, I knew nothing, and no island or coastline was in sight. I don't, I don't, I don't like this course. I don't like this. Maybe if I look at the stars or the sun or the moon. I don't know. The weather kept fair, and for uncounted days I drifted aimlessly beneath the scorching sun, waiting either for some passing ship Happy or Halloween, to be cast on the shores of some that habitable that land. I'm a look. Uh, oh. But neither ship nor land appeared. And I began to despair in my solitude upon the heaving vastness of unbroken blue. The broken the blue. change happened whilst I slept. Its details I shall never know. For my slumber, though troubled and dream infested, was continuous. What the fuck? <laughs> Uh, when at last I awoke, it was to discover myself half sucked into a slimy expanse of hellish black mire, which extended about me in monotonous undulations as far as I could see, and in which my boat lay grounded some distance away. Though one might well imagine that my first sensation would be of wonder at so prodigious and unexpected a transformation of scenery, I was in reality more horrified than astonished. Yeah, seems for there like was that. in the air and in the rotting soil, a sinister quality which chilled me to the very core. The region was putrid with the carcasses of decaying fish and of other less describable things which I saw protruding from the nasty mud of the unending plain. Perhaps I should not hope to convey in mere words the unutterable hideousness that can dwell in absolute silence and Oh I fuck, I just skipped like two things, I think. Nothing in sight save a vast reach of black slime. Yet the very completeness of the stillness and the homogeneity of the cool. landscape oppressed me with a nauseating fear. Fear. The sun was blazing down from a sky which seemed to me almost black in its cloudless cruelty, as though reflecting the inky marsh beneath my feet. That was, that was slimy. As I crawled into the stranded boat, I realized that only one theory could explain my position. Cthulhu. I don't know From anything else. From some unprecedented friend. volcanic upheaval, a portion of the ocean floor must have been thrown to the surface, exposing regions for which innumerable millions of years had lain hidden under unfathomable watery depths. So great was the extent of the new land which had risen beneath me that I could not detect the faintest noise of the surging ocean, straining my ears as I might, nor were there any sea fowl to prey upon the dead things. Let's look at fish. For several hours I sat thinking or brooding in the boat, which lay upon its side and afforded a slight shade as the sun moved across the heavens. As the day progressed, the ground lost some of its stickiness and seemed likely to dry sufficiently for traveling purposes in a short time. That night I slept but little, and the next day I made for myself a pack containing food and water, preparatory to an overland journey in search of the vanished sea and possible rescue. Possible rescue? Possible? On the third morning, I found the soil dry enough to walk upon with ease. The odor of the fish was maddening, but I was too much concerned with graver things to mind so slight an evil, and set out boldly for an unknown goal. An unknown goal. All day I forged steadily westward, guided by a faraway hummock which rose higher than any other elevation on the rolling desert. Looks not nice here. What the fuck is like well it that's a veil I think. I don't know. That night I encamped, and on the following day still travelled toward the hummock. 
though that object seemed scarcely nearer than when I had first espied it. By the fourth evening, I attained the base of the mound, which turned out to be much higher than it had appeared from a distance. An intervening oh, like valley right. setting it out in sharper relief from the general surface. Too weary to ascend, I slept in the shadow of the hill. I know not why my dreams were so wild that night, but ere the waning and fantastically gibbous moon had risen far above the eastern plain. I was awake in a cold perspiration, determined to sleep no more. Such visions as I had experienced were too much for me to endure again, and in the glow of the moon I saw how unwise I had been to travel by day. Without the glare of the parching sun, my journey would have cost me less energy. Indeed, I now felt quite able to perform the ascent which had determined It's a little bit sunset. laggy. On that. Picking up my pack, I started for the crest of the eminence. Is it climb? Is, does it mean like climbing? Oh. I have said that the unbroken monotony of the rolling plain was a source of vague horror to me. Vague horror. But I think my horror was greater when I gained the summit of the mound and looked down the other side into an immeasurable pit or canyon, whose black recesses the moon had not yet soared high enough to illumine. I felt myself on the edge of the world peering over the rim into a fathomless chaos of eternal night. Through my terror ran curious reminiscences of Paradise Lost, mm. of Satan's hideous climb through the unfashioned realms of darkness. As the moon climbed higher in the sky, I began to see that the slopes of the valley were not quite so perpendicular as I had imagined. Uh -huh. Ledges and outcroppings of rock afforded fairly easy footholds for a descent. Whilst after a drop of only a few hundred feet, the declivity became very gradual. Time to go down. Time to go down and do our business. Urged on by an impulse which I cannot definitely analyze, I scrambled with difficulty down the rocks and stood on the gentler slope beneath gazing into the Stygian deeps, where no light had yet penetrated. All at once, my attention was captured by a vast and singular object on the opposite slope, which rose steeply about a hundred yards ahead of me, an object that gleamed whitely in the newly bestowed rays of the ascending moon. I do see that. So, let's go to... Never mind. Let's go to the little bit down. That it was merely a gigantic piece of stone, I soon assured myself. But I was conscious of a distinct impression that its contour and position were not altogether the work of nature. A closer scrutiny filled me with sensations I cannot express. For despite its enormous magnitude and its position in an abyss which had yawned at the bottom of the sea since the world was young, I perceived beyond a doubt that the strange object was a well-shaped monolith whose massive bulk had known the workmanship and perhaps the worship of living and thinking creatures. Dazed and frightened, yet not without a certain thrill of the scientist's or archaeologist's delight, I examined my surroundings more closely. Okay. Surrounding is good. Let's go. This should now take up the zenith, like orange light and does the show above something. the towering steeps that hemmed in the chasm, and revealed the fact that a far-flung body of water flowed at the bottom, hmm. winding out of sight in both directions, and almost lapping my feet as I stood on the slope. Across the chasm, the wavelets washed the base of the cyclopean monolith, on whose surface I could now trace both inscriptions and crude sculptures. Okay. The writing was in a system of hieroglyphics unknown to me and unlike anything I'd ever seen in books. Oh, I need to click. Consisting for the most part of conventionalized aquatic symbols such as fishes, eels, 
octopi, oh, crustaceans, octopi. mollusks, whales, and the like. Several characters obviously represented marine things which are unknown to the modern world. Is that Cthulhu? But whose decomposing forms I had observed on the ocean risen plain. It was the pictorial carving, however, that did most to hold me spellbound. Let's do this one. Dagon contains many themes and storytelling that Lovecraft developer developed in his later works, such as telling the story through carvings at the Mountains of Madness, the Nameless City, journals and characters note, the Shadow of the Time and the hunt, Hunter, hunter of, dark, of the Dark, islands emerging from the ocean, the Call of Cthulhu, or fictional beings and deities based on real events, mythologies. My gun in the whispers in darkness. It also considered the origin of the popular Cthulhu mythos. Some of Wilco's other stories also conclude in a manner similar to Dagon, but let's skip the deals in order not to spoil the ending. So, in the Nameless City, uh, I think. I mean, I th it might be something, but it's also a game. I'm pretty sure, like the Nameless City. I don't, I don't remember what the fucking game was called. I'm gonna record that too when I get to it. It's a Cthulhu game, and like it's based on HP Lovecraft and Cthulhu. It's Cthulhu. It's not based. It's I mean, it is Cthulhu in that, but yeah. Um, also, the Call of Cthulhu I gotta play. So it's also probably something else, but it's a game as well now, so. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, continue this. Plainly visible across the intervening water, on account of their enormous size, were an array of bas reliefs whose subjects would have excited the envy of a Dore. I think that these things were supposed to depict men, at least a certain sort of men. Though the creatures were shown disporting like fishes in the waters of some marine grotto, or paying homage at some monolithic shrine which appeared to be under the waves as well. Of their faces and forms I dare not speak in detail, for the mere remembrance makes me grow faint, grotesque beyond the imagination of a Poe or a Bulwer. They were damnably human in general outline, despite webbed hands and feet. Shockingly wide and flabby lips, glassy, bulging eyes, and other features less pleasant to recall. Mm. Curiously enough, they seem to have been chiseled badly out of proportion with their scenic background. For one of the I creatures see. Was shown in the act of killing a whale, represented as but little larger than himself. I remarked, as I say, their grotesqueness and strange size but in a moment decided that they were merely the imaginary gods of some primitive fishing or seafaring tribe. Some tribe whose last descendant had perished eras before the first ancestor of the Piltdown or Neanderthal man was born. Yes. Awestruck at this unexpected glimpse into a past beyond the conception of the most daring anthropologist, I stood musing whilst the moon cast queer reflections on the silent channel before me. Then, suddenly, I saw it. With only a slight churning to mark its rise to the surface, the thing what slid the fuck? into view above the dark waters. It darted like a stupendous monster of nightmares to the monolith, about which it flung its gigantic scaly arms. Hideous head and gave vent to certain measured sounds. I think I went mad then. Ooh, because you know, I think my Cthulhu makes people mad. I, don't know. Cliff, As I think Cthulhu makes people mad. Back to the I stranded think. boat, I remember little. Wait, where am I? I climb me back up. I think I don't know what's going on. I sang a great deal and laughed oddly when I was unable to sing. It's gone mad. I have indistinct recollections of a great storm sometime after I reached the boat. At any rate, I know that I heard peals of thunder and other tones which nature utters only in her wildest moods. He's dead. That's what he's trying to tell you all. He, he's dead. It's that simple. He's, he's when I came out of the shadows, I was Nani? in San Francisco Nani? hospital. 
brought thither by the captain of the American ship which had picked up my boat in mid-ocean. Oh, he just went mad. In my delirium, I had said much, but found that my words had been given scant attention. Of any land upheaval in the Pacific, my rescuers knew nothing. Nor did I deem it necessary to insist upon a thing which I knew they could not believe. Oh. Uh, Lovecraft was a prominent figure in the world of amateur journalism in 1915. He started publishing his own journal called The Conservative, which included political and social commentary, poetry, short stories, and liter literally criticism written by him and other authors. Howard was a skilled wordsmith, but he also took criticism to heart, which resulted in his decision to step away from writing poetry and concentrated on weird fiction again for the first time since his teenage years. Dagen, published in 1919, it's one of the short stories written during that period. In, in this example, except from the conservative, the masses of horror fiction explains his attitude towards warfare and the idea of world peace. Why any sane human being can believe in the possibility of universal peace is more than the conservative can fathom. Should the, en should the entire civilized world agree sim simultaneously to disarm one or more nations, would undoubtedly retain secret amendments and the proper time to take advantage of their more altruistic and less astute contemporaries in a vile career of conquest against unarmed victims. No country is or even can be above warfare until the basic impulse of the human animal shall thank you. We'll we move. We do move everyone. We do once um, I sought out a celebrated ethnologist and amused him with peculiar questions regarding the ancient Philistine legend of Dagon. Dagon. Fish god. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, Dagon is the fish god? So, let me look at this. Dagon. 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 Was the main deity of the Philist Philistines, worshipped throughout the Middle East and the ancient god of fertil fertility and gr... gr Crops? In Herber, the word Dagan was a common noun for grain. The rules of Akkad, Mesopotamia, shows him as the patron saint of the war conquest. He also appeared as the judge of the dead in an Assyrian poem and underworld prison warder in one of the Babylonian texts. Okay. He is often mistake, mistakenly taken for a fish god due to the wrong interpretation of his name, as in Herber, the word da Dag means fish. In H.P. Lovecraft's work, Dagon is an underwater deity ruling over the deep ones. A humanoid race with fish traits that resides in the oceans. He is worshipped by a secret cult called, called the es Esoteric Order of da da Dagon. Oh, that's cool. I do, mean, I do need to read myself some H.P. Lovecraft. But soon perceiving that he was play more, the, play more H.P. Lovecraft games. I did not press my inquiries. Uh, what was this? August Death of Cthulhu Myth. Oh, all was an American writer and anthologist. He befriended Lowcraft and published many of his work throughout his company, Arkham House. Uh, although he greatly contributed to the popularization of the author's work after his death, he is surrounded by numerous controversies. One of his most questionable decisions involved introducing the good versus evil doctrine. doctrine. Del Threat was a de de devil Catholic. To the Cthulhu mythos, which contrasted with Lokra's view of the world and his approach to the to cosmic horror. As a result, the author work are often misunderstood and mis misrepresented. You know, in today's culture, it is also worth noting that Lokra was never really interested in creating a mythology, and the term Cthulhu mythos was coined by Del Delleth after the author left the mortal plane. I love Cthulhu mythos. I like that. I think it's kind of cool. Let me leave. Please. It is at night, especially when the moon is gibbous and waning, that I see the thing. He's gone crazy. Morphine. But the drug has given only transient surcease, and has drawn me into its clutches as a hopeless slave. So now, I am to end it all. 
Oh. Having written a full account for the information or the contemptuous oh, amusement of my fellow men. Oh fuck. Um. Often I ask myself if it could not all have been a pure phantasm, a mere freak of fever, as I lay sunstricken and raving in the open boat after my escape from the German man of war. This I ask myself, but ever does there come before me a hideously vivid vision in reply. I cannot think oh. of the deep sea without shuddering at the nameless things that may at this very moment be crawling and floundering on its slimy bed, worshipping their ancient stone idols and carving their own detestable likenesses on submarine disks of water-soaked granite. I dream of a day when they may rise above the billows to drag down into their reeking talons the remnants of puny, war-exhausted mankind. Of a day when the land shall sink and the dark ocean shall ascend amidst universal oh my God. pandemonium. Well, well then. What? I hear a noise at the door, as of some immense slippery body lumbering against it. it Hello. Find me. God, that hand. Oh no! Is it that thing from the bottom? The window! The window! He truly went insane, huh? I'm, I'm mad. Insane. Yeah, you know, it's the same thing. Damn. That was really good, actually. I really like that. We hope you enjoyed immersing yourself in our little pool of cosmic horror. We would appreciate if you took a moment to raid Dagen, Dagen and check out our other games and DLCs. Um, so this was my horror uh, horror special video, but I will actually play the DLCs. Uh, this was fun. I like this little game. This was a fun little game. I like this. I just like this. The the store. This it sounded good. Voice acting was good. I obviously love myself cosmic horror. I do. Uh, I need to finish uh, a Call of Cthulhu and record that again, and uh, the, also that kind of stuff. But I just love myself on Cthulhu Mythos as well. Cthulhu Mythos is... It's in here. I love it. Um, but yeah. That was... Uh, that was... That again. I uh, hope you all enjoyed. Happy Halloween. I hope you all are having a great Halloween. S just doing whatever. You know. Just eating some food. Or like going out trick or treating. I'm gonna be live streaming really soon. Uh, it's really soon. I'm gonna live stream some... Puppets Playtime and some Phasmophobia. When this obviously goes up, it's going up not in long. Like, I'm just gonna finish this now. But I hope you all enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Uh, really good game. I am, I will be playing the DLCs for this game. Another time though. Not right now. But as for as it's a long game, really good. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, so hope you all enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I see you guys all in uh, another video. And in my live stream really soon. Bye-bye.